Hello, it's Dan here, and it's the 15th of November. So here I stand in my poly tunnel here in Essex, Southeast UK. And today I'm going to be making a video and show you what I've got growing in here. And we're just going to talk a little bit about how I use my poly tunnel. So down here, you can see I've got three lovely crops. I'm currently overwintering. So I've got red mizuna here. Now this is really nice, nice taste, peppery and earthy, really nice to have that with a salad, nice to have it with a baked potato. Here I have some prize choy, pak choy, grown this before, a really nice variety of pak choy. And here I have komatsuna, Japanese green, and I really like these as well. So, oriental greens, they have a bit of reputation as slugs liking to eat them, and I certainly found that the case, particularly with Chinese cabbage. But I found that regarding oriental greens these don't seem to get attacked by slugs and snails as much at least around here anyway but uh, you can you know have a grow growing these three and see how they do where you are so you can also see i've mulched the ground here with some of my own compost here so i made a video a few months ago now i'll link it down below how i make my own or at least one method how i make my own compost anyway you can check that out and uh, it's adding nutrients to the soil here I'm always trying to return nutrients to the soil, building soil, and over time you can end up with some really beautiful soil to grow your good crops. So that's this little area here. So you see down here, I have a Sanguinelli blood orange. So it's actually carrying a lovely crop. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We've got over 10 good size oranges on here. So we'll see uh, how many of these end up getting to cropping stage, but uh, really happy with this. So. This blood orange tree actually, it endured a winter where the temperature went down to about minus eight degrees C. Um, wasn't last winter, it was the one before if I remember correctly. So minus eight degrees C, that's about 18 degrees Fahrenheit. So relatively cold for a citrus tree, but this took that no problem. I did cover it over with a blanket the times it was really cold, but to all in all, no problem at all. So Sanguinelli blood orange now, Citrus trees, they do like well-draining, growing medium soil, etc. And the soil here is indeed that. It's sandy and light, so it really has thrived here. Once again, you can see I've mulched the bottom of the, or the, you know, around the base of the trees with the same compost. I mulched the plants with you saw earlier. So once again, I'm returning the nutrients to the soil, building the soil, making it more moisture retentive, etc. But yeah. Blood orange trees look very good indeed. So I've got some celery here, it's full white celery, which I initially planted on the 14th of March, so it's self-blanching. So all I did really was planted the seeds in, watered it, and uh, awaited for the crop, which is wonderful. So let's have a bit of celery, shall we? There we are. So quite small stems, of course, I planted them quite uh, tightly in here. Probably if I'd spaced it out a bit more, I'd have got some bigger celery. But there you are, a little bit of celery. Mm. That's nice. Nice and crunchy celery. So, if you want a self-blanching celery, which has certainly been easy to grow here, full white celery, self-blanching, no problem at all. So, you see I've got a sweet potato growing in this container here. So, it's a shop-bought sweet potato. I got it to put roots out the bottom, and then I planted it in this container of growing medium. I think it was in June, July time, something like that. But um, we shall see how it does. If it's successful, I'll be making a full video on this, but um, time will tell. Really have had a long growing season. I'm amazed that this is still growing at this time of year. But um, there we are. So far, so good, and we'll see how it all does. So you can see on the cardboard at the back there, I store that. If people are giving cardboard away, I quite often take it. I use it in my compost and um, there it will stay. Good to keep it in here because it doesn't get wet, you see, whereas if I kept it outside, it'd all end up uh, sort of wet and soggy, which then um, end up then deteriorating. So leave it there till I use it. So you see here, got a peach tree. This is variety peregrine and nectarine variety Lord Napier. Had a lovely crop of peaches and nectarines this year. So you see the peach tree and the nectarine tree are defoliating perfectly normal for this time of year because they are deciduous trees. So it's generally recommended with peach and nectarine trees, you don't leave the leaves lying about because of peach leaf curl. It's also generally recommended you don't put the leaves in the compost bin either. 
so send them out with the council waste. Now, you can also see I've mulched around the base of the trees, so the peach and the nectarine tree, same as the sanguinelli blood orange, same compost. When you're mulching trees, you don't want to be touching the trunk with the mulch or the compost. Once again, same rule here, mulching the soil, returning the nutrients and increasing its moisture retention capability as well. Got my little area here in the polytunnel, so got some chilies here. This is variety Onavec. I've also got lemon drop here, lovely little uh, yellow chili there, named lemon drop. It's got a sort of little bit of citrusy hint to it. So I made a video the other day on how to grow chilies. You might want to check that video out, but really had a lovely crop this year. I've also got some strawberry plants here in these pots. There we are. Look at that look. So I purchased these a while ago and I was growing them in here in my little strawberry tower here but what I've done is I've taken them out, potted them up and I'm going to put them back in here at a later date. So I've just got to do a little bit of jiggery pokery if you will with this to get it a little bit uh, more how I want it but when I do that I'll, I'll show you what I've done. So they're destined to go back in there probably. So I had a question from a viewer the other day on Instagram regarding planting at this time of year. So actually quite an interesting question here. So demonstrate the point. Now I've got perpetual spinach growing here, which I initially planted on the 2nd of October. And I planted them out here, I think four or five days ago, last weekend, something like that. And you can notice that, um, you know, they're still relatively small plants. So if you've got any seedlings plants small plants this size it can be good to still plant them out at this time of year at least in this climate anyway now these probably won't grow too much they'll probably grow more here than they would grown outside because a bit warmer in here but they will really come into growth in the spring so what you can do is get your plantings like this if you plant in october time and even if they end up sitting there during the colder months when the spring comes hopefully they've done a bit of roof root <laughs> establishment and then you can end up with a much earlier crop of what you've grown so certainly yes get plantings out if you've got them at this stage but to give them as much warm microclimate and protection as you can so you can see down here got a little pile of compost here so this is my own homemade compost here look at them worms look lovely they are so Building soil once again, whenever I get spare bits of compost, maybe multi-purpose compost where a plant didn't grow or whatever, got it spare, I'll put it on here in the polytunnel to keep building that soil once again. So I've got some other plants that I'm going to be planting on here. Of course, I'll spread this out a little bit better than this, make it more presentable and easier to plant into. Let's have a look at the plants now. So I've got this lettuce here variety all the year round, planted on the 2nd of October. Look at that, absolutely lovely. So. Once again, shorter days now are gonna get shorter, colder and gonna get colder, but I'll still end up planting these out down there, even if these don't grow too much now, be a nice early crop in the spring. So same applies as what I explained earlier. So down here I've got some avocado plants, there you go. So grew these from uh, shop-bought pip stones, whatever you wanna call them, I really need to get them planted out into bigger pots. Honestly speaking, right, this was the easiest way that uh, I grew this avocado. I actually grew them by accident. I ended up just uh, putting them on the top there, the avocado stones, pips, whatever, of the growing medium compost. It was inside, left the stones on the top and they just ended up rooting. Didn't even bury them in the compost, really easy. So these have actually been out here a while now. If I remember correctly, this one here actually survived. In fact, there's two here. These actually survived last winter out here, no problem without protection. So uh, building up their hardiness and I may end up planting one of them out in the garden sometime, but uh, we'll see what happens. So my two grapevines I've got growing in here. This is variety Rhea, which is a Slovakian grape, and that side is Riesling, which is a German grape. So really nice varieties. I've actually pruned the Riesling already, probably pruned it a little bit early. So it's generally recommended you're gonna prune grapevines if you're going to do it you want to be doing it late November December time early winter that's when I generally do them anyway so this one here plenty of growth here there was plenty of growth off of that one but I can't let it overtake the growth of the polytunnel and as this is a dessert grape I'm prioritizing getting 
dessert grapes over getting wine grapes because learning how to make wine is going to be something I'm going to be getting into in due course, but I'm not quite uh, there yet. Anyway, so grapes grow off of canes which come from the previous year's growth. So the fact that this vine here has put out so much growth this year indicates that next year I really could have a bumper crop of bumper crop of rear grapes. So there we go, we'll see what happens. Anyway, hope you enjoyed that video. It's probably a bit more I could have showed you here in the polytunnel, but um, we'll leave it at that for the time being. Got some blueberry plants down there, which are showing some lovely autumn colors, but um, we shall call this video a day now. And uh, if you like my work, please feel free to like and share and uh, subscribe if you'd like to be notified of any further videos I put up. And as always, thanks for your time and I'll see you in the next video.